Breaking news on KGW News at 11. First tonight, yet another shooting in Portland, but several innocent people were caught up in this one. I'm Morgan Romero in tonight for Laurel. Police believe two groups were shooting at each other in the street near Northeast Garfield and Bryant. The bullets hit at least two homes and a parked car. An in-home daycare was in one of the houses and in the other, a bullet missed a person by just inches. No one has been reported injured at this point and police are not releasing any information about suspects. We're keeping close tabs on the vaccine rollout in Oregon and Washington. Critical workers, including grocery store employees, can get the vaccine in Washington in just over two weeks. Catherine Cook tells us that's part of the updated timeline Governor Jay Inslee announced today. The daffodils are out in Puyallup and the max vaccinations are too, so it's a good day in Washington State. Washington Governor Jay Inslee in a positive mood while sharing who's next in line for the COVID-19 vaccine. Starting March 22nd, people who work in grocery stores, schools, childcare, transit, and all remaining law enforcement will be eligible for the shot. So will people 16 and older who are pregnant or have a condition putting them at high risk. We believe these steps are gonna make this vaccine much more available for Washingtonians and we were thrilled by this information. By April 12th, those over 50 with two or more high-risk health conditions will qualify. On April 26th, eligibility expands to people 16 or older who have two or more health conditions. Those who are homeless or live in congregate settings will also qualify for the vaccine. Inslee noted all of these dates are tentative. He said expanding eligibility will depend on supply and progress vaccinating earlier groups. But I have to tell you, I am thrilled at the progress that our federal government is making in combination with these manufacturers to increase supplies. This week, the state reached a difficult milestone, surpassing 5,000 COVID-19 deaths. The governor visited a vaccination site in Puyallup, calling for volunteers to help at sites like these. He also reflected on the lives he believed were saved through preventative measures, including mask mandates. We are not following the leadership of Texas on this because we have saved perhaps 11,000 people by following science about what will protect our people, and we will continue to do that. Washington is now averaging more than 43,000 vaccinations a day. That's close to its daily goal of 45,000. Also this week, Washington is getting its first 60,000 doses of the new Johnson & Johnson vaccine. Catherine Cook. KGW News. We actually did just learn tonight there are new appointments open to the public at the Vancouver Tower Mall site. So if you live in that area, listen up. You can book online through Albertsons. This was going to be by invitation only, but the county is now opening it up to everyone who's eligible. Moving to Oregon now, where we're working to find out how the state will handle an expected boost in vaccine supply. President Biden is pushing hard to get more doses out to states so they have enough for every adult by the end of May. Oregon leaders think that translates to 200,000 first doses a week for the state by the end of March. That's a 60% increase from what they got this week. But having the doses is just one part of the equation. But to actually accomplish the mission of getting that vaccine in people's arms uh, still requires an enormous human resource uh, uh, effort. And, um, and we're not quite there in terms of, of, uh, of the stability to, to then uh, further scale up. The OHA estimated with all the vaccine sites currently running and some that would be added, the state could eventually give out as many as 300,000 doses a week. Leaders are working on plans now to scale up operations. And thanks to the shipment of the Johnson & Johnson vaccine, more and more appointments are becoming available at local pharmacies this week. Safeway and Albertsons will actually start giving those doses tomorrow. Each store was expecting to get about 200 doses. We checked tonight and actually couldn't find any appointments left in the Portland area, but you can still check the Albertsons website for your area. When you sign up online, you can select whether you want the single dose Johnson & Johnson vaccine or one of the two dose shots. Two other companies, Bymart and Walmart, are also joining the pharmacy vaccination effort here in Oregon. Costco, Fred Meyer, Walgreens, and Health Mart pharmacies have been vaccinating people already. And some people are hesitant to get the Johnson & Johnson vaccine because its overall efficacy rate is lower than the other vaccines out there. But Matt Gregory with our Verify team found out it's really not a fair comparison. Let's verify, how do we measure a vaccine's efficacy? 
Our sources, the CDC, Dr. Anand Parekh, the chief medical advisor for the Bipartisan Policy Center, and Dr. Gigi Granval, an immunologist from Johns Hopkins University. First, according to the CDC, a vaccine's efficacy measures, quote, the proportionate reduction in cases among vaccinated persons. Here's how to think of it. Let's say you get a 95% effective vaccine and your friend doesn't, and you both get exposed to the virus. According to Dr. Granval, so you have a 95% less risk than your friend. So that's the way you should be thinking about it. So when we see that the efficacy of the Pfizer and Moderna vaccines are above 90%, and Johnson & Johnson's is 72% in the U.S., it seems pretty clear which is better. However, you know, I think yeah, we all uh, are attracted to numbers. Dr. Parek explains judging three vaccines by efficacy is difficult. But it's really an apples to oranges uh, comparison uh, between these vaccines. Uh, the endpoints of these vaccines were all different. According to him, the Johnson & Johnson trials took place in several different countries. A lot of the variants that we're talking about also were included there versus the Moderna and Pfizer uh, uh, vaccine trials. And that's just one factor that could easily lower the efficacy percentage of the vaccine. And that's why our experts point to a different number. The bottom line is all of these vaccines are nearly 100 percent effective in preventing hospitalizations and deaths. It's important to, to remember that a vaccine is not going to uh, be some sort of bulletproof vest that's going to prevent you from um, having contact with the, the virus. And another thing that all of our experts pointed out, the efficacies of all three of these vaccines is still significantly higher than our year-to-year -year flu vaccine, and we have no problem rolling up our sleeves and getting one of those each year. With your Verify, I'm Matt Gregory. Yeah, really good info. In new developments tonight, Portland can or police confirm Portland City Commissioner Joanne Hardesty is not a suspect in a hit and run crash. This all started when someone leaked information from a police report. That report was filed by a driver who said she was rear ended while stopped at a light at Southeast 148th and East Burnside in Portland. The driver told investigators she believed the person responsible was Commissioner Hardesty. Police say they were able to rule Hardesty out as a suspect after their investigation. The commissioner held a news conference earlier today saying it was all a quote smear campaign when you have taken on police accountability issues as long as i have you come to expect these kind of attacks i've experienced them in the past and i expect i will continue to experience them hardesty says she hasn't driven her car for months because of a broken door lock and a dead battery she's now demanding an investigation to find out how this misinformation spread where it says customer name, it's listed as George Floyd. And I was like, OK, wow, that's interesting. Uh, new tonight, a Clark County teen goes to get his car checked out and ends up facing blatant racism, he says. He can't believe what was written on his invoice from a local Jiffy Lube. Our Mike Benner got his story and a response tonight from the company. You're looking at Dustin Hawkins and the 2003 Mitsubishi Eclipse GS he bought just a few weeks ago. To say he's proud of his investment would be an understatement. It pretty much took everything I had at the time, so I didn't have the money to get it inspected. So it was my time. It was my I was going in to get it like for buyer's inspection, you know, making sure there was nothing wrong with it. Dustin took his car to the Jiffy Lube near Southeast 164th and McGilvery in Vancouver. He doesn't recall anything out of the ordinary until driving away. And I handed the paperwork to my sister because I was going to read it like later. And uh, and she goes, hey, Dustin, why did you tell him your name was George Floyd? And I go, what? Dustin grabbed the invoice and sure enough, under customer was the name George Floyd. And before you even ask, no, Dustin says he did not give the name George Floyd. In fact, he says nobody ever asked for his name. Dustin says there's a simple and disturbing explanation for what happened. That was some blatant racism, you know? Dustin is biracial. He says this is not the first time he's been the victim of racism. While disheartened, Dustin's thoughts are with the Floyd family. I can't imagine they'd be okay with a big-name corporation just throwing around their deceased brother, son, throwing around his name around like that. He's right. Chances are the Floyd family would not be okay with this. And neither is Jiffy Loop. The company wrote on Facebook, this is incredibly troubling to hear and certainly does not reflect the brand's values. We have shared this information with the appropriate franchisee to be addressed as soon as possible. I would like to see 
for them to change their policy to make sure that they don't do this again and to go through some kind of racial training. Dustin's mom is in the hospital recovering from a recent surgery. She should be focused on her health, but instead she's focused on her son and what happened. It's just scary as a parent because, you know, I don't know if something's going to happen to him because he is mixed and the world sees him as black. Dustin says he's getting by right now with the overwhelming support of family and friends, and he's hoping to put this behind him. I wish the best for the company and all, but like that, that kind of thing cannot keep going. I'm Mike Benner for KGW News.